We're going to fix in a slow leak. What do we do first? Make sure there's plenty of air in it. Make sure it's got plenty of air in it. How much air are we putting in it? I put about 35 or more because okay. you want to check for a leak. So. Okay. All right, let's have a look at that. Look at here. We have a little bit of a bubble brewing right there. So that's what we need to take care of so we don't have a, a leak. All right, what are we doing now? All right, you need to mark where the hole is so you don't forget. Mark where the hole is so you don't forget, okay? All right, then the next thing I would do is we got the valve. We got the valve. Uh, we're going to take the valve. Okay. And I always keep in mind about tire monitors too. Uh, what is it now? I always keep in mind about tire monitors too. You uh, usually you can tell if it has a flame valve coil like that. Um, it, you know, if it's a, if it's a steel one, it's definitely a tire monitor. But a lot of them that are plain ones like this, they can still be a tire monitor, or it'll be 180 out. What do you so, do? If, what what do you, what's the what do you do if it's got a tire monitor? Well, basically, I would uh, break it down away from that, like. Uh, you know, you know, when I pull the uh, bead loose like this, I make sure this is far enough away from this side and 180 out. Uh, you don't want to break a tire monitor, it's about $70. Yeah, $70, depending on the vehicle. Some Mercedes have $250 tire monitors. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Same thing over here, keep it uh, 180 out. Keep it 180 away from it. Uh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, keep it 90 degrees away from it. 90 degrees at least. Not likely. Tell. Not likely. Oh, that's all your weight stuff. So you don't damage the machine or damage the rim. Yeah. You don't want to damage the machine or damage the. Okay, so you pull off the weights. Does it matter about the weights on the inside? We would, no, you'll do that when you balance it. Okay. Pull up off the rim. You have to balance it. Take your tool and what I do is I I used to, I used to take the, the smaller curved end. Mm -hmm. This one's more for, for low profile tires, but every other tire uses this. Okay, then spin it around. Oops, it's not plugged in. Feel a nail in there. Got a nail in there. Find a light in there. What you got? Nail right there. Oh yeah. I got start. a nail. All right, use that. I mark it like this. I know where it is in here too. All Very right. handy because you'll forget. Yep. There you go. Simple as that. There's a hole. We got a nail there. Safety glasses are good, yeah. They're our friend. All right. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to get the tools I need. We'll start with the first one. I put this Robomatic on there. Helps to kind of uh, take away any debris or uh, anything. Uh, loosens up the, uh, in my opinion, loosens up some of the treads, you know, so you can peel it away better with this. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the vulcanizing fluid, um, that prepares the tire for the patch. And uh, this is something extra I do. When I put the patch on, I put beats in there too. and. Because of this, I've never had a comeback using bead sealer. Never had a comeback using bead sealer. If it came back, you know, for some, Now, where do you put the bead else, sealer? I'll show you. I, I, I put a little bit over the patch. I've never seen any, any, anyone else do that, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I've never had a comeback, so okay. maybe it's right. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. So we'll just put it on. 
scrapes on the tire to have a smoother surface so the patch can go on it easier. Mm -hmm. Not smoother. Okay. And uh, we'll work with who uses this rubs on the rubs on the uh, patch. Right. Um, and what I do when I, whenever I put a patch on is I take my knife and kind of just pull the seal a little bit because some of these seals are so hard to get up that you'll end up pulling the patch off. So right. before I do, I just take a little, you know, like that so I can get something to grip on it. Right. All right. Uh, did you learn that from experience or did somebody tell you about that? Experience. Experience. So you pulled some patches off and didn't like it? Yes, that was not fun. What if you left that on there? Would that be okay? Now tell me about that tool. Some folks do that. I don't do that. Uh, this will right, this will uh, take, take away some of the surface and make it flat so we can kind of scuff it up a little bit. All right. The hole is right in there. Okay. So I, I, I want to clean the surface up around it. All right, let's do it. See how it kind of took off some of the rough, the little lines on, on the tire? Right, I see that. Alright. I think is the Robomatic to help clip on some of the debris. That's the debris from your uh, operation. Of, you got it. your scraper there, okay. Kind of wipe it a little bit, get anything else out of there. All right, then that's going to take is the vulcanizing uh, fluid. This right here. All right, let's take a pause. All right, it changes the property of the property of the tire to where it'll make the uh, kind of act as a glue. When it changes the properties, it'll make it. Uh, what would you say? So the tire would uh, patch would bond to the tire. That's it. Yes, yeah, it patch would bond to the tire. All right, let's put a little bit on there. Put a little bit on there. You just kind of put a little around it and just, and just let it sit for right around the hole. Now you want to put more, you want to put a bigger area on there than, than the size of your patch, right? Or about the same? That's about what I would do. Um, put just a little here right there. And that's it. That's just what I would do. And then to give it a second, you know, a little, little bit of time to dry. I've got to go to the time to dry, huh? Okay. How long does it take it to dry usually? A couple minutes. Okay. Put that in bed. Now the glue is dry, right? All right, it is dry. And now, and now you take your uh, patch and you, and you pull the stickers off. Stickers? Yeah. Okay. But they don't want to come off. What somehow. do you do with the stickers after you pull them off? Throw them in the trash. Oh, okay. That's right. Come on down here. Now the hole was right there in the middle, so you want to get this in the middle. Have you ever not marked one and put the patch in the wrong place and had it still be? Yes. You did? Really? One time. One I don't time. Think I would tell that story, Adam. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, I guess they do. Well, if you did it every single day, it'd be something else. You'd be looking for a job. Yeah, I guess so. And you're rolling it with that wheel. Yeah, it helps to push it on there kind of tight. Get it on there, get it on there, make sure it doesn't have anything. Pretty cool, this. Now you can gently get this sticker off. Now you can get the plastic off, or you can leave it on. What happens if you leave it on? I'd probably nothing, but I always take it off. It's just more fun that way. Well, I just that's just the way I've been taught myself. And okay, now there is a there is an all-purpose patch. Now this is what I do extra. I take some of this bead sealer, and um, what's the bead sealer now? The bead sealer, uh, you can use this uh, to seal beads. See, seal beads. Now, um, if you ever have a, a bead right here, you know, that just leaks all the time. I did it on the car before. You just put it around, it'll seal it. Uh -huh. this, this, this is great stuff for sealing uh, uh, any leak on a tire. Okay. It doesn't always work, but it has a high success rate, though. So, it does. See, then I just kind of put it around it. Now, most guys probably don't do this, and I'll, you know, if you show this video to anybody, they'll probably say that's dumb, but I've never had any comebacks doing this, so uh, I'll just keep doing it. I can't see where it's hurting anything. Yeah, I mean, all right. All right. Yeah.
We're well, all done with all those tools. Yeah, the next thing you do part of customer service, I want to change out the valve stem. And, and this is brand new, but, but, that, one, but that one looks kind of old, so mm -hmm. let's change it up. Yeah. Then you'll cut it off back on the back side or what? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. We use a great big, huge knife. Wait a minute. Let me watch you cut it. You did it real quick, Adam. Yeah, you'd have to cut it. We'll cut it out of there. So cut it and get away. It's my special knife. Nice, nice knife. Yeah, it's really cool. Okay. Okay. All right, this is a uh, valve, stem, valve stem puller tool. Valve stem puller tool. See how it had a little uh, indention? It's got a little indention there. All right. And Would it work it better if you put any kind of deep sealer around that valve stem or anything? Or? I never have. I wonder if, if I should start doing that. Yeah, I don't know. Well, Most people probably don't, but I'd probably put a little soap on it or something. That's well, just my idea. Yeah, I never thought of that. That's not a bad idea. Okay. Yeah. All right, next thing is you put the tire back on. Yeah. And keep in mind. Put it on that black wall to the inside. That's right, because you got black wall on your inside. Yeah, I got black wall on the other ones. All right. Or, I mean, black wall to the outside, excuse me. All right. You going to put some soap on that or anything? Or? You can, but, but I know the tire is going to be easy to put on, so. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, it worked out really good. Anyways. But yeah, soap is a good idea, but on ones like this where I know, I know they're going to go on easy, I don't worry about it. But on some low profiles, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you will. Did you put some low profiles on before? Yes. Are they hard? Some of them are. Yeah. But actually, the ones with the Corvette are pretty easy. Is that right? I was surprised. I did. All right, next All right. thing you do is you, now the pedal down here, you have to kind of see, you know, if once you get some air, push down the way it pushes the tire up. I try to get away with that. I try to get away without doing that. The core, but uh, yeah, you pull it out so it'll go in there quicker. Yeah. Try, try to get away without doing it, but it doesn't always work. Yeah. Oh, do it again. <laughs> now we pop the boost right here. Alright. When it seats, the tire may jump and come off the uh, rack. Yeah. All right, and now this is a customer spare tire, and this it has tire monitors, and it always put in more air than you, than, than you normally would. They would, because how often do people check their spare tires? Uh, not very often. So this car, I mean, average, I'd say you put 35 in it. I'd put 40 in it. Because okay. Because the person's never going to check it, and it's not fun to have two flat tires when you're on the side of the road. Good point. So if it's a spare, you put more air in it than you would if it was going on the ground. Right, and this has tire monitors. If you if you do the tire monitors, you'll cause the light to come on. So, tire monitors do what exactly what the car says on the uh, manufacturer's yeah. tape. If it yeah, if it's one of them, if it, there's not a donut spare. Yeah, but I mean, if um, it's a donut spare that takes 60 pounds, do you put 65? No, I wouldn't do that to a donut. Okay. Because it could blow your head clean off, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right then. Doing good. That's a good little tip. Because I can't tell me times I've I've checked the car and the spare tire was flat. Yes, always.